Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Your Big Music Moment. I'm your host, Chris Sharma. We've got a great show for you today. Kendall Conrad, all the way from Pennsylvania. But first, a shout out to musicians on call who bring the healing power of music to those in need. Here's Kendall. How are you? Welcome. Thanks for having me. This is fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. Should we start out with some music and then we'll uh, and then we'll have a chat? Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm ready. I'm ready for you. So this one is called Better On. Um, I put this out last year and I wrote it with Aaron Schertz, who I was like so excited to write with. Um, he's an incredible writer, like insane lyricist. The the lines that we were coming up with, this was so fun to write. So this is called Better On. It's on Spotify, Apple, all that stuff. got it quits for the last time and here i am again can't say why i'm knocking on your door like every time before knowing that we're better off better off all my friends say hey, that you know good you never love me like you should girl you touch a bullet you know he was never worth it yeah you better off better off i got it through my head but my heart just can't forget we were better on a hot night Boy, I could use a drink Better on a king size all night Put your hands all over me Better on makeup Cause it's all we make up Knowing that the overt's on every last song We'll get on the covers of bad for each other Boy, we should just move on We'd be better off If we want to better on, better on, better on, better on So make me stay in here all night Everything I got on my chest A baby chest and thing And it's better off, better off We were better on a hot night A red wine Boy, I could use a drink Better on a king size all night Put your hands all over me Better on a makeup Cause it's all we break up Knowing that the overt's don't ever last long Put on the covers of bad for each other Boy, we should just move better off if we weren't better on better on better It's, Thank it's, you. It's, it's uh, definitely you're pointing out the yin yang of, of relationships there. Yeah, and I I really like that yeah. idea, which I came into the right with, which was uh, you know everyone's saying you're better off without somebody or something like you're just you're better off, and it's like I don't even know like literally where that comes from or what that means. Better off what like but better off without but what does that mean? So I just I like that better on idea of like flipping right. it and like what yeah. does that mean and there's so, you know yeah. it seems like there's so many subtleties in relationships and you know sure you're better off in one respect and then you're going to miss something else and music and the songwriting is a great way to kind of get people out of that binary thinking of a lot of things i think the art mm -hmm. is really important for that mm -hmm. uh, yeah i agree definitely so origin story uh How'd you get, why are you a musician? Why are we, why are we sitting here? How'd this all happen? <laughs> why? I, I don't have a good origin story. Um, 
I just, I always liked to sing and I would take, we, you know, we still had boom boxes with CDs when I was a kid. So uh, I would take that out to the barn and we had horses and chickens and stuff. And I would literally perform for the livestock. And that's kind of like what I used to do when I was a kid. Um, and then like from there, it just rolled into joining the school choirs, um, joined the church choir, just wanted to sing all the time. And uh, yeah, from there, just I taught myself how to play guitar in high school, um, taught myself how to write songs, just kind of it just it all rolled from from singing for chickens, basically. <laughs> um, that's where it started. But I mean, so, but these are a couple different things like, you know, playing guitar is different than singing. And then songwriting is a whole different thing on top of that. So, uh, you know, how and so it, it started out, you were just you were you were vocalizing and enjoying that. And then you moved on to kind of having something to say and then mm. saying it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I so I'm I'm like pretty aggressive pop country right now. I would call it. It's not. Um, it's not like that fun loving, um, you know, very sweet, like Dan and Shay kind of pop country. Right. It's, it's more like almost like a maybe Halsey. Um, it has like an edge to it. It's like edgy pop country. But when I, I started singing, I just love the divas. So I liked Whitney and Mariah and Celine Dion and Madonna and, you know, Shania Twain, like all of those really fabulous women who were making music back then faith hill um this kiss all that stuff um i loved all of that so that's that's where i i started it wasn't particularly country it was just like very um big voiced kind of strong women i really liked that diana ross janet jackson like all that stuff um so it's funny that i, I started with that and not knowing, you know, that I wanted to play guitar, I wanted to write songs. It just all started with almost like mimicking or imitating Mariah and those like really very big um, power ballads, like love songs that I was a kid and had no idea what those lyrics even meant right. at that point. You know, it's it's funny, but I just I loved just like they would get on stage and just belt it out. Um and like looked fabulous doing it. It was just very, very appealing to me as a kid. Um, and and those and the mean the meaning of the songs that they write and those lyrics change as you get older, you know, because mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. different parts of the of what they're saying resonate differently. You're like, oh, that's what they meant. <laughs> you know, when you're Yeah. Um, yeah. But you said aggressive pop, which I which I agree with. I think that, you know, you're I think which and is that part of where does that come from? And is that part of the themes? Like you want to have the force of these kind of divas, but you're in a, in this storytelling, you know, country, more country ish direction. Is that what you're, yeah. you're combining? Yeah, I would think so. I mean, I was in an English major when I was in college. Nice. Um, and so I always liked to read and I liked books and, and I like stories and that you're right. Cause it's like, they didn't really write their own songs um they all they just were vocalists they just you know it wasn't their stories it wasn't anything like that so i like the idea of it being my own voice literally like i'm singing the things that i'm right. you know writing um so that had a big appeal to me and especially because i am a writer and i love like you know i i used to write you know stuff for the literary magazine in school like little short stories and and so you know it, they both kind of combined at some point, you know, when I picked up the guitar and I was like, you know, I think maybe I could do this. Um, and a big part of that was Taylor Swift. So she's from Why I'm Missing. And that's really close to me. And I, I remember when she exploded, everyone was like, oh, my God. Some people were like, I knew her. I went to school with her. I knew her dad. So, um, you know, it, it came to us. She came, she was here very early, her success. Right. Like everyone was like, you need to listen to this girl. Um, and so she she did inspire me to write my own songs and to pick up the guitar just because she's my age. And, you know, I didn't there's not a lot of girls who are 16, 17 putting out an album, you know, right. with a label right. you, with, that you can listen that to. Kind of power and voice that's that's theirs. It, yes. Yeah. Yes. It was just very I was like. 
it was like electrifying. I was like, this girl is 16. She co-wrote every one of these songs on her debut. It was just like, wow. And she plays guitar and she's from here. And I was just like, felt very um, like energized by that. So right. that's kind of where the country. And then I just, I love Reba and Brooks and Dunn and like all of that stuff. I just like immersed myself in country music for like years, years after that. That's all I would listen to. So that's yeah. where it like took a turn. It's, it's a powerful format because you do, you know, it's very musical and it's very, a lot of amazing musicians in that genre. And then it's, it, but it's also, it really gives you a platform to talk about something, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's, you know, um, you know, Taylor Swift's a great example of someone, you know, she can talk about the things that matter to her and they matter to a lot of people. And I think when you do that as an artist, it's you, it's, you probably feel more vulnerable when you're we're talking about those things, because you're having to say, this is what matters to me. And maybe it's right, maybe it's wrong, maybe it's where I'm at right now. But you you are opening that window in your soul and much differently than, you know, some amazing song that was written by somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And, and sometimes it's like, I wrote something recently that I played for my mom, you know, about something I was going through. And she yeah. was like, do you really want to say that? Cause it's like very, like, do you want people to know that? And I was like, well, A, it rhymes with the line before it, <laughs> but B it's like, you know, that's the thing that people are going to gravitate towards. Cause right. it's like stuff that you'd want to say, right. you know, that I think that's why Taylor popped off when she did. Cause it was just very real stuff that she was singing about. And it was like some people like me as a person, like I would never say some things that I'm singing about to somebody. I would never say that, never say it, but I, I can sing it. So well, that's where that's it, a, the know. job of art is to say hard things. And then and we all we all learn from that. Look at how much, you know, art addressed a lot of the issues we're seeing now. That's been addressed in art for 30 years, mm -hmm. you know, either yeah. metaphor or directly or by satire. Mm -hmm. and Yo, knows. there's so many mediums and, and ways yeah. to do it too. Like, and I love wordplay. That's my favorite thing is to like take a, an idiom or a saying that we say all the time, you know, penny for your thoughts and like, be like, look at it and be like, what does that even, what, where does it come from? What does it mean? What if you took it literally yeah. and you what wrote if I have a dollar? Thing? Yeah. And going down that rabbit hole yeah. and like changing, flipping it. Yeah. I just, I love, and that comes from, you know, English reading, like yes. being literate. Um, you'd have to understand, you'd have to know that saying in order yeah. to realize that I'm flipping it. Like some people I'm finding don't, um, I don't know if it's texting or social media, like some, some uh, people like younger than me, um, young kids, they don't even know some of these sayings. Right. To know that it's a word play on it, which yeah. I think is is interesting. Um, and those things, but those things evolve. But um, they do. It is kind of an issue. Like now, people call a long read is a magazine article. Now, <laughs> like <laughs> should a long read kind of be a book? <laughs> but huh? You know, yeah, okay, yeah. Like a more. like Lord of the Rings. Right. That's a long read. That's a long one. Yeah, <laughs> War and Peace. Yes, I've read that. Nice. Nice. Yes. Les Mis. Well, I've read all of them. Uh, I love a long yes. read, an actual long read. I, I agree. <laughs> and those were amazing windows into a lot of the things going on then and what people were thinking about. And it's pretty cool mm -hmm. how a lot of that applies. We're still thinking about and struggling with as a group and individually. A lot of those same things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, let's, yeah, let's get relevant. Let's talk okay. about your favorite author after uh, after okay. this next set. Uh, Sweet. Really okay. Cool. Um, let's see, what should I do here? Okay, speaking of stories, so I had this hook, um, you know, in my notes or whatever before Stranger Things, the Netflix show kind of took off, but um, I revisited it when the show, you know, exploded, and I love the show. The show is great. So um, I'm, I've been trying to get their attention with this one because I think it would be a great fit in the in the series, but this is called Stranger Things. There's been a man walking on the moon and 
cars that drive themselves It's all so crazy just like a stream But I don't want nobody else Nothing about us boy makes any sense Like wearing ripped jeans to a black tie event Or showing up in diamonds to a barbecue soiree But we did it single that I put out um, out of this five song EP. So I have six songs out right now on, on all the streaming platforms, but this is the very first thing I ever put out and it is called Come to Your Senses. Wake up, wake up, been waiting all night for you to let up, let up. Quit playing games, it's your move. Put down your bottle, go full throttle, walk up to me, boy. Get out of your head, get in mind and sit. This might sound crazy, boy. Do your senses. 
just jump over me Whisper in your ear and pull you closer I feel my bad Fantastic. It's two, two great songs. Uh, um, Thank you. Yeah, the wordplay in, in the, the first, the, the Stranger Things is, is really is really interesting. It's so cool. Um, so everyone should go check this out on all streaming platforms. And, yeah, uh, and it's and you've they, got five crazy. Songs out. Yes. Yeah, cool. five songs that are off of like live on the same project. Great. Um, and then Car Crash I put out in February of this year. And that's with a whole different team production thing. Um, so that one's a standalone. So that one should sound a little bit different because it's a, okay. a different, you know, creative team. But um, mm -hmm. and it's my most pop. So that one's like barely it's got like a banjo lick in it, but it's very, very pop. Um, yeah, I really awesome. pushed it on that one. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, the genres are meant to serve serve your artistic, you know, your direction. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's, yeah, uh, I wanted to do so. It's called Car Crash, and it describes um, all of my past relationships. It's a metaphor for all of them, and it's got a lot of like I wanted like glass shattering sounds in it, and it's got like you know cop radio effects, like almost like I wanted it to be like you were at the scene of the crash, right. and it was just it, it was a very pop. I think with all the samples and everything, it, it was a very pop. Um, well, idea that I had. So, so you're taking the story storytelling into the audio of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I love when, when pop, I mean, Sam Hunt samples stuff too yeah. um, in his music and he's country, but um, yeah, I like when they sample stuff. It just, it's right. very, it's very cool and creative. Like, so. like out of context noises from the real, the real world. Yeah. 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 Like real sounds of rain. Like I yeah. like at the end of um, Imagine Dragons Thunder. Oh, um, yeah. They don't play it on the radio this way because, you know, they're trying to fit into their format. But like in the actual single version, like you can hear the the rain and the thunder and stuff at the end of the song. It's just yes. kind of cool. It's, just, it's like, that's so smart. It's very it, cool. It, it really is. I think one of our artists last week used uh, trash cans in an alley. Oh, that's tracks. awesome. And so I think that I think everyone's really cool. using these tools to really tell tell your stories as, you know, with all the power that that uh, that you can. Um, mm -hmm. So speaking of which stories, though, what is what author, you know, inspired you in your kind of English study and, and kind of dovetails mostly into into the music that you write or even inspires music or just somehow is connected to that? So um, genre wise, I like really sappy romance, super, super sappy, melodramatic romance. And then I really like anything horror. Um, I like the offshoots jo genres of it, like sci-fi and like all of that. I like that. Um, but Stephen King is my favorite author. I've loved him since I was a kid. He's, he's still my favorite. I'd love to meet him. I just think he's like, his stuff is amazing. Um, and as a fan, you know, I can even see like when he had that accident where he was walking or the car hit him and he had a, a near death. Do you remember that? I do. Um, yeah. And like, I can, as a fan see through his work when that happened because his writing style changed a little bit. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, it's just, it's very, you can tell the pre pre accident post accident in his books. Um, the the tone or there's something about it that's changed um that's... he's still still great but it's not carrie or salem's lot or some of that yeah. stuff before that he's um, he's been a real powerful voice in in our popular culture culture mm -hmm. and popular culture mm -hmm. um you know with his his works which is kind of interesting because i think that 
you know, he, you know, his commentary about what's going on that he does through his work is a little bit similar to, you know, yours. You're think, singing about something, you know, mm -hmm. thematically mm -hmm. and, uh, yes. you know, and, and about the larger experience, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that is, that's, that's pretty interesting that you that, uh, found inspiration with him. He's so, so cool. Like Pet Cemetery. Like he has so many things that are just like, where, what, like the, yeah. the concepts are so, but you're right. It's, it speaks to, you know, life itself. And, you know, yeah. what if you could, you know, bury someone in the cemetery and they could come back? Like, would you do it? It's like, right. it makes you look at yourself. Yeah. The um, Faustian bargain there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you can like vicariously live through some of the stuff that he writes about. And it's like, well, I don't have to actually pick. I can just read about these characters yeah. doing it, but you know, kind of confront it that way. I just, I love him. I think he's so cool. Well, that's, who's, who's that's, your favorite, who's your favorite author? Uh, I like an author named Ian Banks. Okay. I don't know and that. He wrote the wasp factory and then he's also written a bunch of kind of speculative fiction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ian I A N. Yeah. Uh, I think there's two. I. Uh, yeah. One. I. Okay. Ian Banks. So. I'll check this out. I don't I've know this. I've never been asked that question before. <laughs> Flipped it around on me. Oh, see? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I'll have to look that one up. Now. Yeah. I don't know that name. That's new. Um, I learned something. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I think, yeah, it could be a little bit dark, but he's, you know, he's. Oh, he's I love dark. Def he definitely That's talks great. about our, 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 our local, our communal struggles. So. Mm, okay. And, I'll, and I I'll think put him on the list. With Ian Banks, or I'm sorry, with, uh, you know, with, uh, um, you know, literature and how you've connected it, you know, your world, I think that that's, you know, that's really amazing how you've taken that ethos of communicating themes and everything and putting it into art and putting that into song is, uh, is, mm. is really cool. Um, so thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, and, thanks and, for having me. Yeah, it was fun. Sure we'll do it again soon. Absolutely. You're yes. Always welcome back. Would love to. Perfect. Would love to. And uh, so what are we going to, what song are you going to close out with? So I always close out with this one. So it's kind of predictable. <laughs> but that's okay, because it's my favorite. Um, this is my favorite song I've ever written. And um, yeah, it's just, I wrote it about people who... Um, not necessarily put me down, but just people who kind of um, tell you no and then they stand in your way and they won't move aside and let you, you know, let you basically do your thing um, when you have a vision. It's just it's just a song about haters, basically. Um, it's called Leader of the Pack. funny when I first put this out people thought it was about being a scorned lover which I find fascinating like oh that guy must have been a real jerk and I'm like interesting it's up me in the dark out in the woods you thought you could keep me from the stars they're closing in now me for dead with nothing else to be said to give me a second thought set your traps and i'm stopping on my way to the top ain't gonna stop so cheer you up and spill you out and i wander around and see you now if you throw me to the wolves i'll come back come back i'll come back come back the leader of the pack
a second thought set your traps and i'll just stop on the way to the side ain't gonna stop so cheer up and see you out i want to around and see you now i'll be there for you when you need me i'll be Awesome. Hey, Kendall, thank thanks you. so much for joining us on this. We really appreciate it. Can't wait to have that, you back. Thank you so much for having me. It was fun. It was a good talk. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Can't <laughs> wait to continue the conversation. And, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and we'll, be in, we'll be in touch. But anytime. Again, thanks so much. It was so great much. meeting it, you. It really was. It really was a pleasure. Take thank care. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye <laughs> Kendall Conrad, ladies and gentlemen, amazing artist. Can't wait to hear more from her and uh, really kind of has taken songs to to another level and so i encourage everyone to listen and uh, listen to her lyrics because uh, she's really saying something uh we are big music shout out to musicians on call bringing healing power to, of music to those in need we will see you next week at 6 p.m pacific for a special show in partnership with tumblr all good things so stay tuned for that and uh, join us then